Hello everyone, my name is Brendan Snyder. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to another episode of New Music Finds. So this is where I like to collect together and go through all the different music that I've purchased over the past week. And I get it from different places. Of course, local record stores, but also online retail like Amazon, eBay, and more. And so as you can see in this video here, I made a move. So from New York City out here to where I am in New Jersey, and despite making that move, I still managed to get new music. Got some uh, brand new releases, also got some stuff from a local record store. So we're gonna dive into all of that in just a bit here. But before we do, if you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please do. Uh, leave a comment, hit like, all those things help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. But by hitting the subscribe button, you will also be able to stay up to date on all that's going on in the world of music just like this with new music finds. So we've got a lot to cover here, 12 CDs to run through. June uh, 3rd, which was uh, new release day, Friday, but that was also my move day. And so what was really great is I went ahead and tried out my brand new address and shipped a new CD from Amazon out and it was here when I got here. So moving day, what could be better? Moving to a brand new house and getting new music to add to that big 11,000 CD collection that you can see sitting there behind me. And this one here was a cool one. This one here I was really looking forward to, but honestly didn't have that high of hopes for it. It proved me wrong. The Fix, called Every Five Seconds, and this one here is really, really good. If you listen to the three singles that came off of it beforehand, then you'll know what this is like. And it's all pretty much in that same vein. But I have to say, a decade between releases, 2012 was their last one. Then you get this one here. I haven't checked yet, but I think the artist that did this one did the other album cover. They're very similar. There's the guys there on the inside. You can check them out. And here's the back side. So I know we all don't like these cardboard packages, but very cool album cover. And the music on here is really good uh, from start to finish. It's only 10 tracks. I think it's about 45 minutes. Very good. If you're a fan of The Fix from the past, you're going to love this. It's good stuff, and I do recommend it. Now, unfortunately, that was the only new release that I got. And now, the next thing being something I just got in the mail today, this great Canadian band called Prism. Whoops, there we go. Sorry, I got the cellophane on there, so we got some reflections. And, of course, I'm also filming in my new place, so I've got light coming in from different places, and I'm not yet... Uh, or haven't worked all of that out about where things are coming from, but we're gonna get there with all of it. Prism, so if you don't know them, do check them out. You can see it's still in the plastic because I literally just got it in the mail. I was waiting to film this episode until I got it. Um, I've got some other stuff by Prism. I've got a best of, and I've also got an album called Beat Street, which is really good. That's so far been my favorite one. I've got another album from Prism on order that's uh, theoretically coming tomorrow. So you'll see that one next week. But um, good stuff. If you're a fan of um, other Canadian bands, Loverboy, and uh, I can't think of some of the others right off the bat, but this is some good stuff here, and I do recommend it. So um, I know they've been around for quite some time, started in the 70s, went into the 80s there. Um, I think they made an album in about 2016, a new one I saw streaming, but I haven't been able to find it uh, physically yet. So I'm on the lookout for that stuff, but I'm sort of digging deeper into Prism uh, after having uh, picked up that best of and Beat Street. And so now I'm basically trying to find whatever I can and very few of their albums are in print. This one happens to be, and uh, so is another one that I'm picking up as well. But as I said, I did make a trip to a local record store. So this one is in Somerville and that's about 45 minutes for me, but hey, I've got a car now. So when I was in New York City, everything revolved around uh, New York transit. So subways, stuff like that. And now I just jump in my car and go. So it's really, really great. I'm very happy about that. And so um, I went to this place called The Sound Exchange and um, all CDs. Somebody even left a comment and said, oh, why didn't you go any, any of the records? There weren't any. This is a store that focuses on CDs. And I thought that was really cool. I'll leave a link also to that video. There's a old school record store experience video about that one. And the CDs themselves came in those white plastic 
uh, security protectors. And so it gave you a real throwback to like the, the late, you know, mid to late 90s, give or take, when those things were still being used and so forth. But I talked to the guys about that and they said, you know, their heart just lies with CDs. So that's like a lot of us here. They know vinyl is on the boom and, and everything. And they thought about getting into it. But they said for them, the CD is the best. And so they're just sticking with it. And I'm really grateful because that store was full. I got 10 things, including some things that I looked for for a while and just haven't come across. So there's stuff that's out there. And you know, if you want to pay big bucks, you can always get anything. But if you're looking to actually get a good deal on stuff, then you got to look for a little while and hit some stores. And that's what I've been doing. First up, the Knack, Serious Fun. This is actually the first Knack album that I had back when I was growing up, when it came out. I think it came out in 1991. And um, good stuff. I remember uh, the song Rocket of Love, which is the first single on here. And I think there was another one. I can't really remember, but um, great album. And I didn't have it in collection. You know, somewhere along the way, I decided I wasn't listening to it. Sold it to get money for more CDs kind of a thing. Now I'm glad to be able to put it back in the collection. And uh, I think it's only about five bucks, give or take. A lot of these were really good deals. So uh, Loverboy, Wild Side, um, another great Canadian band. We were just talking about Canadian bands like uh, Prism. So I had a, a paper copy of this, like the cardboard sleeve one. And it just came with one of those bundles of five CDs kind of thing. But I didn't have the jewel case edition and I haven't seen it around. So I was glad to get this one. The single that you would know off this is Notorious. Um, the others on there didn't make their way to greatest hits and stuff like that. So that's the one you're gonna recognize. But again, rest of the album, the first five albums by Loverboy are all really good. So it seems I picked up a lot of Canadian stuff. I'm just realizing this kind of as I'm going through this here. Rick Emmett of Triumph, absolutely. So I don't know if this was the debut solo album or not. Uh, the year on it is 1990, so I know that was right around that time. And in my opinion, that album there is about as close as you can get to Rick sounding like Triumph. It's definitely of the era, that late 80s, early 90s sort of glam metal rock sound that was out at the time. And good stuff that's on this. I'm really enjoying it. His later era albums really kind of veered and moved away from the sound. A lot of it is acoustic and stuff like that. It's just where he was going. But if you're looking for something that's uh, like Triumph, at least as close as you're going to get, this solo album here, really good. I do recommend it. Then we've got the Alan Parsons Project, and this one here is a collection of instrumentals. I had not listened to this before. Um, I did my New Music Now episode and showed it and picking it up. Ten tracks that are on here that all work really well together. I'm super enjoying this. You know, there's sometimes you just want music for the background, and you want something that you can really get into and listen to, but not something that's going to get overpowered by the vocals. And so I've been looking for some instrumental collections, and I've got a few albums like those, but this one here has turned out to be really good. I'd love if they put a new one together and uh, remastered and everything, of course, and or even just reissue that remastered, but we'll have to wait. All right, next up, Flash, self-titled release. This one here is on the One Way Records label. That's a label I like, you know. They don't do great in the packaging or anything, but I mean, they put out stuff that's hard to come by. And so this one here has Peter Banks. Uh, that was his project at the time. Tony K also plays on it, but was not a member, I guess, of the band. Although on the back of this, they just list it like he is. But I did look this up, and it's really focusing around Peter Banks, you know, having come out of Yes. And so interesting there that we've got really two Yes members together on it. And when I saw it, that's what made me grab it. I'd always kind of, you know, ventured on the edge of it, but never really gotten into it. And, you know, I don't know. Um, we've got one guy singing the second track, Morning Haze. And let's see, that is Ray Bennett. And I have to say, I didn't particularly care for his vocals on it. But the other guy, Colin Carter, who is the lead vocalist on here, um, that his vocals are great. And I like the tracks he does on here. So that turned out to be really good, a lot better than what I had sampled. Because when I had sampled things, you know, sometimes you don't always get the full effect of it. So putting that on now and enjoying it has really shown me what a great band they are. I'm going to search some more stuff out. This next one here was the big find. And I heard a lot of you guys come back and comment on the New Music Now video where I first showed this. And so Frankie and the Knockouts, Below the Belt, apparently very hard to find. Uh, you guys are coming back saying a lot of you are looking for this. This is a 1998 reissue by Escape. 
Not a lot of those you're seeing floating around used in America here because that's a European company, but this is a New Jersey band. Apparently really hard to come by. A lot of you guys mentioned even having it on vinyl originally. Good stuff. Um, it's got to sort of sound like um, it's on the vein of some of that early 80s Bruce Springsteen style stuff, but also sort of Jersey Shore kind of thing. Again, I don't know they're specifically that area, but what I consider of that sort of stuff up the East Coast. And so uh, John Cafferty and the Beaver Brown Band, you know, if you sounds like that. So the bands that have the, the piano up front kind of stuff, saxophone, things like that. And so another band like that, Frankie and the Knock. I've definitely been enjoying that one. Next up, we got John Fogarty. Oh, sorry about that. Still working that out. There we go. Um, I had the zombie. Weird album cover. I steered clear of this for many years, and it's very, very 80s sounding. It's nowhere near as good as the previous album, Centerfield. This here is 1986, it looks like, on the back of this. So, um, glad to have it in the collection, and I do like John Fogarty and his vocals a lot, but this thing here really sounds dated. And so I think that's why it's been out of print for as long as it has. It just doesn't hold up. I'm sure it sounded great in the 80s, but you've got a lot of, um, you know, sort of digital drum sounds and things of that nature on it. And just, you know, man, if they would re-record some of these things or put uh, real drums with them, I think it would change a lot of this stuff. Then there were three that I picked up that were new from the same store, but still sealed in plastic. White Snake live and it's uh, in the shadow of the blues and again i'm not a big live album fan i know i say that a lot it has four new studio tracks that are on it ready to rock if you want me all i want is you and a really great track called dog number 11 on the second disc this is the last track I, these four tracks are some of the best stuff definitely of the new new generation of white snake you know since they had reformed but even going back, man, this stuff is good. I wish it would make its way to compilations or something because the album is out of print and these songs are so good. They just deserve to be out there and heard more than tacked on to a live album kind of a thing. But hey, at least they gave us four and not just one or two. And then I got this, Tony McAlpine, great guitar shredding guy, simply called Collection. Spans a bunch of releases on here. There's 12 tracks, neoclassical style. If you don't know who he is, great he often tours with steve Vai, and they guest together and stuff like that but a very very accomplished guitar player has done a number of different projects and things um so yeah totally recommend it um then we've got this one here which is a cool one malfunction monument and if that doesn't ring a bell then andrew wood who would later of course go on to mother love bone and then unfortunately have a tragic passing before that band could really hit it or take off before that band andrew wood along with his brother kevin wood were in this group uh, malfunction and i don't think they ever officially released an album although that stuff has been gathered up and since released but the band uh, wrote new music, used Andrew Wood's lyrics and things like that, hired Sean Smith, I believe, as the vocalist, and he's singing, and he does a great job. And so if you're looking for some of that late 80s, early 90s grunge-style sound, Mother Love Bone-esque stuff, Malfunction. Kevin Wood, brother of Andrew Wood, using Andrew Wood's vocals and um, song, you know, sketch idea, stuff like that to create this and some other stuff. They were originally under the name, I think called From the North, might, get, might be wrong. Um, that band put out an album. This is now being reissued of that under this name because that's really what it was, was a malfunction project. Um, so if you have that album, you might check this out to make sure that you're not duplicating. I actually have it but I'm okay with that. I wanted to get this one here and really check this out. And I like it better under the malfunction name than the other name, which I think is from the North, but there you go. Anyways, guys, there you go. I, you know, 12 CDs, some great stuff. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed that stories behind it and everything, why I picked a lot of that stuff up, but some new releases, some catalog out items and 10 U CD. So I've made out pretty good here. We'll see what next week brings to us. And uh, so definitely check back next Wednesday for a brand new episode of New Music Finds, but also 
Saturdays, I'm usually posting a new music now episode, which is right when I get stuff in the mail. On Fridays, I usually film it and then post it the following day for you guys to check out. And I do have some stuff coming this Friday, so I'll certainly be showing you guys that. Anyway, hope you have a good one. Take care. I'll talk to you all real soon. Bye-bye, everyone.